Now I want to bring in the managing director of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And Bonson, in your Dividend Cafe note today, you, you talked about how hard it is to predict future inflation. But you also took a shot at folks who were overlooking or, or maybe underplaying this whole supply chain issue as well. Yeah, I mean, there's basically two wrong answers about where the supply chain fits into inflation. Those that say it's 100 percent of the reason and those who say it's zero (laughs) percent. It's somewhere in between. And I think that 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 last comment is right, that there's a lot of factors that have piled up. But to me, this inadequate supply of goods and services relative to the built up demand is a very big deal. So let's talk about the other parts then uh, to the inflation story. Uh, And and of course, things like rent wages, uh, those are going to take a lot longer. Well, are they in, in this sort of spiral where they can't even come down yet? It, uh, and can you bring them down or do they have to peak naturally? Uh, most things need to peak naturally. Markets are so supposed to be self-correcting mechanisms. Uh, the rents is going to be a tougher issue because it's usually rent or price level purchases. Both are very elevated. See, the financial crisis, we had this just insane bubble in buying a home. Rents were very cheap. And then all of a sudden, you got a big rent inflation post-09. We don't have enough supply of housing stock at all. And that's going to hurt multifamily for renters and single family for buyers. This week, the first stagflation ETF was yeah. filed. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes this stuff is the sign of a peak or whatever, peak oh. hysteria, or sometimes it's, it says we should be worried. Which one do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's the sign of peak hysteria. I think that the product manufacturers are marketing driven. Uh, they're often not very good at manufacturing product that actually fits a thesis either. Right. But usually, Sometimes it's hard too, though, right? No, I mean, it's very hard, but <laughs> see, then you don't do it. Okay. If it's hard to do, don't try. Right because the mechanics don't add up and investors end up getting something different than they thought they were getting. But no, generally, they're only doing it as a lagging indicator, going to make a product that meets what last year's story was. So you've been, you're, you're, you, you have the Dividend Cafe, that's the name of your notes, right? So huge demand now lately for dividend. People obviously yeah. are concerned. Um, but, it, I, you know, for me, I see a lot of people just look, Who's paying the highest dividend? Obviously, that's not the way to go. So for people who maybe want to go into dividends for the first time, what are some of the key points? Yeah, so you're right, though. We've been dividend growth investors for over 20 years. I've been writing DividendCafe.com since well before this period. But all of a sudden, it seems popular again. So that's nice. The reality is high dividend is not the same thing as growth of dividend. If a company's 100 bucks, it's paying $5 in dividend, and it drops to $50 a share. All of a sudden, it's a 10% dividend. But that's not the way you want to get there. It's an accidental high yielder. We want companies paying a high dividend because they're growing the dividend. And when the dividend is growing, the stock price eventually grows as well. So you want organic cash flow, good valuation. I've talked to you many times. You were there for the story about Chevron, a great example. Kept growing the dividend. Guess what? That stock's up 130%. Right. No, it's another fantastic call. What do you make of this market overall? Um, I think there's still froth in some of the stuff that's really? got hit the worst. And, I mean, and some of these things are down like 50, 60, 70 percent. Yeah, but then some of the higher quality thing names are down 5 percent. Mm. And I don't think that you can keep those valuations even there either. Now, they'll correct quicker, but I still think people have gone from the really junky junk to stuff that was just more well-known overpriced. So I think you'll start to get a washout in some of the real shiny objects. But ultimately, I think it's going to be a value year. I think, and I'm not just talking my book. I'd be happy to buy growth that's right. dividend oriented, but I think the unattractive, unpopular stuff of last year and, and especially the year before, that's really where the value is. Before I let you go, what are you going to do now? I mean, your Porsche is not going to get here. Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> I, I don't drive my own car. So. <laughs> Okay, not even on the weekends. Uh, David Bonson, thank you very much. It's been too long. Great seeing you in the studio.